So I have my interior pieces for my slip pockets already done, lined, ironed, and ready to go. I have one piece that is a little bit smaller than in the other. I like a small set of pockets and a regular larger set of pockets. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my first piece. I'm going to sew the sides of my piece at a 1 8 seam allowance. And I'm going to sew both sides, this side and this side just the sides. I do not need to sew across the top because that we will bind. Which I have my binding right here. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, I'm going to use a stitch length of three. Make sure you caught the edges on both sides, especially when using a scant seam allowance. Can you take a bigger seam allowance? Absolutely. The nice thing about binding the tops of pockets, especially when you're using matching fabric, is it makes it easier to find them in your bag. And it makes it easier to get a nice squared pocket. I don't have to worry about it in the top corners. So let's turn this right set out. Normally I would take this over to my iron, but mine looks pretty good, so I'm not going to worry about it. If your pocket like you can see on mine, my cutting may have been off just a pinch. I'm actually going to take this over to my cutting table and I'm going to square this off because I want this nice and even. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have a nice squared off piece. I just used my acrylic ruler and my rotary cutter. The instructions tell you to fold your piece and lay it on. If I were using vinyl or leather, I would go ahead and do that. But because I'm using waterproof canvas, I am going to do a little slightly modified, I kind of call it one and a half fold binding method. So the other thing that I need to do, well, I can tell that this is upside down. So this was the side that I wanted to be facing out inside my bag. I actually did a little bit of pattern matching because when I lay my piece in here, I want it to look like it matches the rest of my pattern. So I have to know that this is my front side and this is my back side. Okay. So again, I'm going to take my binding piece and I'm going to lay it right sides together. And I'm only doing this because I'm doing one and a half fold binding instead of just single fold binding, which would be folding it over. If I was doing vinyl or leather, I could do the single, but I'm not. And I don't want the raw edge of the waterproof canvas to be exposed on the outside where I'm looking into my bag. Okay, so it is hanging off a little bit on both sides and that's okay. Just put a couple clips in there. Take it to your machine. Actually, I want to do a fourth seam allowance. So even though I've already stitched one length, it's not going to hurt it. And I'll explain why in a moment. Okay. If I left it at one eighth, 
I wouldn't have enough showing. That's why. So I want more showing. Otherwise, it would have been almost like this, and that's too little. So let's get rid of our threads. There we go. Okay. So I wanted a little bit of my waterproof canvas showing. And now we're going to flip it over and fold. And you can see it will cover my one fourth stitch. And that's exactly what we want. Clip it well. Because if you don't, then you'll miss catching and sealing this on the inside if you don't. There we go. So now this is my open side. I'm actually going to stitch from the top side. And I know that if I unfold this, my stitches are right there, right along that sealed edge. So I know that if I go a scant bit inside, I'm going to catch this part and that will be sealed nicely. So as long as my edge covers my fourth seam allowance, I know that this will be sealed. So let's go ahead and start that. I'm not going to worry about the edges so much. And I'm going to go ahead and just clip that right off. My edges will not fray enough to be noticed, but it would on the front side with putting things in and out. So that's why I did that. So there's one of my pockets. Let's do the next one. That's how you do the pockets. And we're all set. And you see my pocket is just a little bit shorter on the one edge. So, like I said, I like one that's a little smaller. This one will be for my cell phone. This one will be for things like chapstick and things like that. Okay, so there are pockets. Let's get them attached. So here is my interior panel piece. And now I have to figure out which panel goes, which pocket goes on this panel, which I think, I think it's, this one okay pretty sure yep nope yes yeah otherwise that one would be way over here and very offset if this were vinyl i would not be pinning it like this it's cotton so i'm going to just make sure it's all nice and square and I'm going to pin it in place, and then I'm going to check. Won't be 100% perfect, but it's gonna be darn near close. Okay, there we go. So now she gives your original pattern three inches down, which mine's four and a half, and I'm okay with that because when I cut this out, I matched it up at this point in the pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yep, it's a lower pocket. That's okay with me. So next step is I'm going to, I'm going to poke out my corner just a little bit better with a pin. Where did my pin go? I do that. I set them down and then I lose them. So I'm going to pull this out just a little bit better. There we go. Now it's nice and square. Okay. So I'm going to start with my pattern with my piece. And what I like to do, let me draw it on there for you. I like to start at my edge and go diagonal up and then over towards the 
outside edge and then down. So basically I'm making a little triangle here. Okay, so I'll start here, go up on a diagonal to the corner and then down. Okay. Okay, so that requires you to start upside down and along the edge, come in. I will backstitch. Keep your needle in a down position and pivot. And a 1 8 seam allowance. At the corners, I also like to do a little back stitching just on a diagonal and then go back to the center and then keep going. You can pin all along here. You can use double sided tape. I use that as little as possible. I often read how people say that it gums up their needles and so I try to avoid that. Okay. Just pull that corner out a little bit more. Okay, just on a diagonal. Come back to the original spot, pivot. I'm going to come across just a couple stitches. And then come back towards my edge and backstitch. There you go. My first pocket is on. I'm going to go ahead and Get an approximation of where I want a center to be. So let's see. I'm actually going to take it right down the center there. That'll work just fine. If you also have a machine that does not thread automatically, these little fish from Amazon are the best. They're little needle threaders. You get about, I don't know, 20 or 30 in a pack and makes it so easy. And again, I'm going to do a little back tacking. And I'm going to make a little X this time back to the center and then keep going. I will not do it at the bottom. Just at the top. Okay, so I'm satisfied with this pocket. This side's a little bit bigger than this side. Fits my phone nicely. Actually, this side will probably, that side will fit it too. So I could put whatever I want in either pocket, whichever pocket I want my phone in, and I'm all set. All right, let's go to the other side. I'll put that aside for now. Okay, so I have this pocket all set and matched up. Go ahead, I'm going to pin it. And once again, start here, go up, come across, and then down. And on this side, I'm going to start at the edge, go up, out, and down. But actually, I'll be coming from this direction, so I will come up, over, and back. So I just essentially make a little triangle there. Okay. All right. Again, I am more than three inches. Normally, it's 
three inches, I'm okay with it being a little bit lower. I like the fact that it matches. And I try to get back into my original line so that I don't have an extra set of stitches there. Just makes it look a little prettier. And I went four on the other side and I think I went four on this side. Trim your threads. And now I have to decide, I always like a pen pocket in my bags. So I'm going to do a skinny pocket divide on this side. Do my little X. To the center. I do not want to leave this big of a pocket on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a place to, you don't want a pocket hanging open on a bag. That's just hanging open like that is just not attractive. So let's see. Actually. I think maybe I will go here. I don't know, I just guess. I just look at it and see what looks nice. And I think I will do that. It's a nice thing about creating these bags. There's so much you can do to make it your own. And give it a little personality. Okay, now that my threads are clipped. Next, we are going to, let's see, attach the bottom of this one and get it put together. So it's time to put the magnetic snaps on. I have my interior pieces here and my magnetic snap pieces here. There will be four pieces that you will need. Typically, this is called the female end. This is called the male end. Um, so call it whatever you like, but you're going to need one of each piece. And then you will need two washers. So I have my washers here. Something to mark and something to cut. I used to have an X-Acto and one of the kids made off with it for their craft. So I'm going to use my little really sharp scissors. What we need to do first, if you haven't already found the center of your piece, you need to do that. So I have the center. And then on the back side, you're going to measure, just as the instructions talk about, measure down and put a little dot. <clears throat> you know those scraps of Decoville Heavy that you have, or one of the other pellens, keep these. They're great for attaching snaps. Okay, so I have two pieces cut out and I am going to mark my pieces. So let me show you what we're going to do. You take your washer and place it in the center. I'll mark the center and I'll mark each slotted side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, using a pin, poke through, poke through, match it up, and I will take it to my ironing board and iron that down. So 
So I'll be right back. Okay, my Decoville is attached and marked. Next thing I want to do is, it's a little bit nerve wracking, but I'm going to poke a hole with my scissors, just the length of the line that I made on both sides, on both lines. And that will allow me to, on the other side, put one of my pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just slipping it through. I want it tight. I don't want it loose. Don't make those slits any bigger than those prongs. A lot of people use fray check. I have mine banded because well, I don't want to tell you what I did with it one time, mistaking it for something else. But anyway, so I can actually put a little bit of fray check on the front side. Then put my piece through. And then the washer goes on. And here's where the controversy comes into play. Some people bend them in, some people bend them out. Me, I bend them out. Not sure why, I just do. That's just how I've always done them. I'm going to press them out. And then take some heavy duty masking tape. And I'm going to put a little piece of tape over that. It's just to, I don't know, protect the prongs and not protect the prongs, but to just keep everything, just another layer of, I don't know, protection, I guess. I'm not exactly sure, <laughs> but I just do it. Making it smooth. There, that's what I'm trying to say. Making it smooth on the back. Just smoothing it out a bit. So there, we have our first one done. Okay. Let's go to our second. Find your center. Make a really teeny tiny little notch. Make your mark down as far as the pattern calls for. Take your next piece of Decoville. Again, center your washer. Mark the center, both lines. Use my pin to find the center. Match it up. Now, just a little word of caution. Don't do that. That is where your exterior and interior are going to meet and it's going to be bound. You don't need any extra bulk in that section. So I'm just going to hold that, take it over to my ironing board, and I'll be right back. Took it to my ironing board and I have it all ironed on. Could I make this a little smaller? Maybe, but I know that's going to be plenty of room. Let's poke once again. This is probably the less, the scarier way to do it. I don't know, maybe exacto is scarier for some, but I just like to use the scissors. I just go slow. A little fray check. Oh. oh, no, I'm coming out through at the other side. There we go. There we go. Okay. Again, washer. Press it out. And I don't want to press those so that they're poking out this side. Just make them parallel. And then a little bit more tape. My daughter had all this fun tape that she didn't want anymore, so I get to use it. 
this. There we go. Here is something that I often do to my bags, especially if it's going to a loved one. I will write them a message on the inside lining in a place where it won't show, but it's just my little well wish for them. This bag is actually going to go to a cancer fundraiser for my son's soccer team. I'm going to put a little self-love quote in there. So I hope that message can resonate with whomever wins this bag. So let's keep going. We have snaps in. Let's click them together and line them up. Let's see how we did. So if this happens to you and you have it in there, all you're going to do is go over to your cutting surface and you're going to match those up and cut them. Just make sure you're square along the bottom, your pockets are square. Okay, make sure everything is square. But I'm going to go ahead and just take a little nip off the top there. Otherwise, I won't match this up well enough. So I'm all set. Now it is time to put the bottom on. 